most Republican members of Congress are avoiding town halls uh, at, at, at any expense uh, to the extent that activists have actually organized town halls all across the country independent of the member of Congress, invited them to it. Some have showed up, some have not. And when they don't show up, they put a cardboard cutout on the stage and have a dialogue with this cardboard cutout. And my, my favorite part of, uh, of these events is that they are actually quite respectful to the cardboard cutout. <laughs> and you have to admire that. Now, secret video emerged today of uh, Senator Dean Heller, who he's one of the most vulnerable uh, Republicans in the Senate. He's up in uh, 2018 in Nevada. Video emerged of him doing his district work. That district work was a fundraiser with a lot of his donors. And he started talking about town halls that these Republicans have to go to. Uh, and it was fun to see him talk in an unvarnished way about them, not knowing that he was being recorded. And basically he said, I'm bringing Congressman Amodi with me because I can't stand them. And I let him do all of the talking. He's great at it. Uh, but I'm just going to sit there. It's just two hours of hell, hell for me. Uh, and I'm, I'm dreading it, but it's a box you have to check. That was a phrase that he used, a box you have to check. Uh, so a senator whose re-election was already an uphill climb just said that you know, holding town halls with his uh, constituents is, a, is a, a box that he has to check and one that he dreads. Sarah Talbot says that her representative is Sam Graves and he literally phones in his town halls. He won't do them in person. Yes, this is a new, new-ish thing that, uh, that a lot of members of Congress are doing. They call it a teletown hall. You know, it was introduced several years ago as, this, as a great uh, you know, pro-democratic or, you know, little d-democratic innovation into the, into the space that this is a way that people can, uh, without having to leave their, their home, can pose questions to their member of Congress and hear directly from them. And as a complement to the rest of what a member of Congress does, that's true. A lot of them, though, are using it as a substitute. And so they'll just sit there in front of a speakerphone and in order to ask a question, you have to kind of get into the queue, press star one or whatever. Uh, and then uh, you have to be, you know, they, they have to go to you. So, wh and while they go to you, everybody else is muted, of course. So you don't hear whether people agree or disagree. You don't hear the booing of the, uh, of the answer. You don't hear applauding of, uh, of an answer. Uh, so it's, it's a much more clinical feel. And, you know, if they don't think they're going to like your question or they don't, uh, then you know, it, it's much more difficult to get your to get your question in there. So, the, it, you know, it, it, it started as something that could have been a nice compliment to uh, being a member of Congress. And some members of Congress do use it. And let's say you did one of those every single week, but you always but you still did regular town halls and you still met with people. Then that seems fine. But it is it's certainly not a, uh, you know, a, a decent substitute for for a real town hall. Okay, so um, we have two questions about the Moab bomb dropped in Afghanistan. Cindy uh, Vanderschaff uh, was the first person to bring it up. And the second question was, did Congress, of course, I think this is rhetorical, did Congress give its a, a approval? Right. Well, Congress is gone. Uh, not that, uh, uh, so Congress, so in this sense, Congress gave its, <laughs> somebody smoking weed over there. Uh, <laughs> it's legal here, so I'm not, I'm not diming anybody out. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Congress did give approval to go to war in Afghanistan and, and has given uh, approval to go to war against Al-Qaeda. And ISIS is an, is an offshoot. Oh, man, it's really strong. Uh, uh, ISIS is an... Things are going to go <laughs> off the track here. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> ISIS is an, is an offshoot of al-Qaeda, so technically the, the 2001 AUMF would uh, much more plausibly apply to this, to this uh, dropping of the bomb. But the C Cindy's question, you know, this is a bomb that if it were dropped on lower Manhattan would, would wipe out everything from Houston on down. Like this is a, an ext extraordinarily powerful bomb. They call it, you know, the, the, the most powerful weapon uh, short of a nuclear device. And it was dropped on, they say, a series of uh, caves and tunnels that ISIS has been using to, uh, to hide out and plan attacks.